I'm Janie Donaldson. And I'm Cindy Walter. And I'm David Martelli. Welcome to Quilt Central. Where we celebrate quilting. In everyday living. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Jacquard Products, committed to meeting the needs of artists. Genomi America. Genomi, because you simply love to sew. Fairfield Processing Corporation. We care for your quilts. A1 Quilting Machines. A1. Precision Quilting Machines. OFA. The original rotary cutting system. Sulky of America. Makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, books, and iron-on transfer pins. Welcome to Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts, Janie Donaldson, Cindy Walter, and David Martelli. Last week we met Brian Burquest when he showed us how he makes his beautiful marbled fabric. This week he's going to tell us what he does with it. Hi Brian, welcome back. Hi Cindy, thank you. So what do we have today? Well today we're going to do a project from one of our books that has about 24 different patterns of various butterflies and flowers and goldfish. We're going to actually do a butterfly today. Stained glass. Stained glass. Yeah, great. And this is beautiful. We're going to learn how to make this? Absolutely. Wonderful. And it's much more forgiving than traditional stained glass to do it in fabric. Okay, good. And how do you get started then? Well, you need to take a piece of canvas, some kind of background, and you're going to trace out the pattern on it. Traditionally, I would use um, a chalk or something that would fade away rather than permanent marker. But I used that today so it was easier to see. Okay, so don't use something that's permanent. That's good Absolutely. Too. Next, you do want to trace out the individual pieces and lay them down. Um, say, for example, that you didn't like the particular color that's there right now. Um, what you can do is very simply remove that, use a craft glue, and just lightly put a few drops on. And that's on. a repositionable, not a permanent glue. Correct. Hmm. Just a basic tacky glue. So let's check that out. Hmm, I think I like that one better. Actually, so that you can just that design one, it. Yeah, put the okay. Other one back. Great. I like to do it and let it sit overnight, look at it the next morning, make sure I like my color selection. Okay. Because it's easy to change at this point. I like it. I like both. That would be hard. You'd have to look at it from a distance. <laughs> Next up, we're going to work with the lead line, and this is like traditional bias, except there's no right or wrong side, and I don't need to iron it I down. It. It's much easier to do curves with this. Hmm, what we'll do first is, very simply, we're just going to take and we're going to measure out the piece that we need. We'll cut the ends, and as you'll notice, they do fray a bit. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is be able to just seal them lightly. Hmm. You can either use a candle or you can use a wood-burning tool. We're then going to take an applicator and just run a very thin bead of glue. Now this is a different glue, so it's a little more permanent. Correct. This is a traditional craft glue. Okay. And what I'm going to do is lay that down on there. I'm then going to take a plexiglass square and just press down. I want to see it to make sure that I'm pressing and it stays in the line, doesn't get twisted around so or anything not else. Really seat it in there. And Correct. Set, set it on there. Don't okay. need to iron it. Don't need to do anything else. Just let it sit like that. Okay. And I just want to point out. I asked you how you did your curves earlier. And it's so easy because this can just curve around however you want it. Absolutely. It seems it's much easier. Very simple, very quick and easy. We'll do a quick curve right here. And just to show you, we'll make a little snip right there. And again, we'll seal our ends real quick. Hmm. Run a small bead of glue around. This is a great project for kids to do with their parents because the mom yes. could just seal it for them and they could do it together. Mm -hmm. And if you were with someone who's just a small kid who wanted to do it, they absolutely don't have to seal it. Oh, that's right. They wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would work fine either way. But for something that you're going to quilt and give a, as a gift to someone or hang in your house, you probably want the end sealed. Right. And then so once it's all done, you don't have to iron it or anything. Nope. We're, we're gonna... You're just going to take your batting and once you've finished all the lead line, take your batting and your backing, okay. put them together, and then you're going to quilt it. Okay. One thing I do want to point out in laying the lead line, if you notice on this side, I followed the curves a little differently. On this side, I did the individual lines and then did an outside line. It gives you a completely different effect on both sides of the wings. Completely waves. different look. Yeah, that's great. Kind of neat. I like that one better, but it's there's no right or wrong on that. You got it. And now you're going to sew it down to make yes. it permanent. What I'm going to do is use a black thread on top. Uh, you can use any color thread in the bobbin. Um, 
and you'll see on some of these we used a gold thread, some a different color, just to get a different effect. Mm -hmm. But basically you stitch over the lead line, your stitching doesn't show. Mm -hmm. It's completely invisible. And now it's moved from being a glue craft project into being a quilt project. Right, and I really like that you've just done the lead line because it has a real stained glass look about it. It's yes. a different, uh, you know, it's puffy here and tacked down there. Beautiful, I saw that you did the same project in a few other fabrics. Yes, and this one I used um, a gold thread in the bobbin, okay. which just pulls well, through see. a little bit, and ah. you can see on this one, instead of doing a zigzag stitch, I actually did um, one stitch up and one stitch back. Ah. Gives you a little extra security. You have two layers of fabric over with the lead line going over the top of mm -hmm. the, all three. You wanna make sure that you're securing all of oh, those fabrics so you're catching down. both fabrics. Correct. Great idea, so Correct. it's really secure. And I wanna back up on here because I, you told me earlier, and I think this is neat, this is a fabric that you made by hand that you taught yes. us last week. Yes. And these are commercial prints of fabrics you designed. Yes. Yeah, you can't tell the difference though, really. And, but they it's, blend well together. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay, this is unique. Here's another one. Um, this one is just a single piece of fabric for the entire butterfly with oh. the green highlights added in. Oh, how quick. One of the nice things with our marbled fabric is you can get away with this. Traditional fabric, a print might show up and be too repetitive. Oh, I see, because I saw it on the next one too, the same point. The fabric looks so different on both sides. The same piece, one piece of fabric for the entire butterfly. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, you brought a huge quilt show with you. In fact, I think you probably have too many to go home with. You won't, <laughs> you won't notice a few missing. And Which, so, what color's your living room? Yeah, right. <laughs> And so I love the greens in this and this the flower. Tiger lily, yeah. Tiger lily. Hmm. Another butterfly, just a different style. It's beautiful. View through a window. It's beautiful. Some seashells. Yeah, that could probably go home with me. <laughs> uh, nice uh, lemon lily or orchid. Hmm. Uh, nice blood orchid. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Colors. And then just a random rainbow ripple drop. <laughs> it's beautiful. Let's take a look behind us. You have spectacular Certainly. projects back here. Uh, one I'm really proud of is the dragonfly. That was the first paying piece for me. The first oh. piece where someone said, here, I'll pay you money to do oh, something how, with fabric. Oh, how exciting. Oh, yeah, that feels almost illegal that we get paid to, it was to fun. quilt. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> nice. And then the one behind you, the dragon. Yes, the dragon I'm really proud of. Um, it took me about a month to get the fabric painted just the way I wanted it, but it only took me about three days to do the project. Oh, my word. And you know, I want to point out, you've only been working with fabrics and marbling for about a year, less than a year. December so. 2000. 2003 is when I learned to use a sewing machine. Oh my word, and this is spectacular. So if you could do it, I can do this too. It's amazingly easy, yeah. amazingly easy. And you can do something simple like the yin yang. I took 20 minutes to do. Well, some stained glass projects I know can be very complex, especially if you work with glass. So this is a way to make a real fast one. And even if you're working with kids, I was thinking earlier that they could just frame it. They don't have to even turn it into a quilt. They could frame it. It's endless. Don't what have you... to sew anything yeah. at all. Yeah. I did like the dolphins, and I know your dad made the fabrics and the dolphins, and yes. um, he's going to join us next week or in a few weeks, I think, and teach us his style of marbling, yes. which is a little different than yours. So I'll be curious to see his, his marbling fabric, too. Well, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Cindy. It was nice meeting you. And um, make sure you count your quilts before you leave, okay? <laughs> uh, let's join Janie now and see her with another stained glass project. Today we have with us Barbie Swanson, and she is a fiber artist and a tool designer. Welcome, Barbie. Thank you, Janie, for having me here. I, wanna, I was just looking at this little Christmas tree, and you must have cut the pieces with this mm. ruler. Oh, I sure did, and it's wonderful. The new line of patterns is coming out for stained glass using these Oh, tools everybody's I into stained glass these days. For sure. So what I found out I could do is with my first tool is to make a landscape with this. A landscape with a scalloped ruler. Hmm. Amazing. And that's the number This is a one light ruler. top table and so you can see through here a Isn't little bit better. Isn't wonderful because it really helps when I go to trace my pattern on here. And this master, it's uh -huh. thicker than normal. It is thicker because I cover my tracing paper with uh, contact paper oh. on top and bottom so that we have uh, a oh. nice pattern piece. I make oh, two. Stay for you. Look at that. Lines right up. Sure does. And you keep And cutting. then I lay on all the pieces and I just put them on with a little bit of glue stick and that takes care of holding it in place just enough until I can put my bias tape on. To give it the stained glass and look. Stained glass look. Oh, that is beautiful. And this is ready to go to the machine. 
sticks on there really nice. It and, really does. And then how do you hold all the layers together? I love this basting gun because oh. it's got the very finest I've never seen of such tacks. a tiny needle. And it just holds the whole sandwich together. You don't need too many. If you sew over one, what happens? Nothing. You won't even notice that you sewed over it. It is so fine and it's so easy. Even when you go to take it out, you don't need a special tool. You can oh, just pull it like that. My goodness sakes. So it works great. That's one of my greatest finds. You can just sew with this one. Right, and we will go sewing here. Take this one down. And when I'm do a landscape or any stained glass, I like to have quilting in between the layers. And what I would do normally is sew down my tape first, and then I would come back and audition different threads for the different parts of uh, oh. my landscape so that I have blending. Oh, and these are you. wonderful natural colors. They aren't even segments of color. Um, They're uneven. So very they, uneven, so it's so natural. It's, oh, it's very much for landscape. Colors. Yep. So I've chosen a green, an olive green up here okay. to use in this part. And as you can see, when I did my design work, this fits this tool. And in order for me to come over and finish it up, I'll have to change the angle a little bit. But still, every angle in here has been done with oh, that. Oh my goodness. So. I like to go approximately a quarter of an inch away from where it is. So this is thicker so you're able to stitch along the edge of that. Right. Now we just glide right along. Oh, and, and that'll add beautiful. texture to the work. Oh, that is beautiful. The and so you blend. can see that the uh, Here's a finished one. product has uh, the variegated thread, the green like I started using here. It's with I've, a wide texture I've, and up fine. in the sky. We don't want to take too much away from the fabric and that, so just blend it right in. Some of that in there. Well, auditioning is, is almost mm -hmm. half the fun of uh, selecting the fabrics and the thread. Playing with threads. That's one of my favorite things to do because there's so many neat combinations. You just never know what's going to work with what. Well, maybe we should retitle you as a okay. thread guru. <laughs> the thread guru. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of thread, that's for sure, of all kinds. Well, thank you so much for sharing all your things thank with us. Thank you. Our sewing educator, Cynthia Scott, is going to show us a clever way to make a stained glass lampshade. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Cindy. Thank you for having me today. Oh, I love it. And this is a beautiful project. I can't wait to see how easy it is. Thank you. I had fun designing this. Oh. I've always wanted to do stained glass, but I've been afraid that I would hurt myself oh. cutting myself with glass. Yeah. So this is the easy fabric way to get a stained glass lampshade yeah, look. Yeah, that's a great idea. Right. How would you get started? Well, we start with a adhesive lampshade. Oh, a pre a prepackaged one. Right, one that's already has a sticky surface to it that is available at any craft store. Great. Um, I'm demoing a nightlight version, but really you can apply this idea to any size lampshade. Mm. Yeah. So what we did was we start with our lampshade and take the cover off of the lampshade. Um, this becomes our pattern for what we're going to create. Okay. What I did here was I fan folded the cover to get the uh, lead lines that I then drew onto my base fabric. Now this has been stabilized with an iron-on stabilizer so it's nice and firm. Okay, so you've already ironed it on the back. Correct, correct. Okay. So once we've uh, traced our design onto our base fabric we're then going to embroider a set or just satin stitch straight lines to create the leading look with a gray, dark gray uh, embroidery thread. So you just leave your zigzag foot on and just do a satin stitch? A regular satin stitch okay. um, with, with the machine. Then the next step though is a shortcut to the stained glass look. Oh, okay. The shortcut was I actually looked for some inspiration uh, with existing stained glass patterns. I drew uh, my pansy design uh, and modified it a little bit 
and I scanned this uh, using my computer and brought it into our digitizing software. Oh. I can then create an applique very easily and let the machine do the applique rather than uh, Wonderful idea. having to do it. Yes. Is it difficult? Do you have to know computers and all that to digitize? It, uh, no, it's actually there's an applique feature in the software, so it makes it pretty easy okay. and lots of fun. Now, I've already loaded the design onto the machine, and it's a two-step process that we follow for each color of the applique. Now, I've already started this one. And the first step is actually creating a, a straight stitch and our uh, veins for our leaves. And I've already completed that here. After that step is completed, we then remove the hoop, leaving the fabric in the hoop, carefully trim away the excess fabric, and then we're ready for the second step, which I'm going to do right now. Okay. So I lower my foot. And it's actually the machine is doing a, a small zigzag to secure the, the, the loose edges of the fabric. And then it goes ahead and does the final satin stitch. Oh, yeah, it's good, it's good to do that last because it's holding everything down. Right? Exactly. Oh, is it going to go zigzag everywhere and then come back and satin it stitch? It does all three leaves and okay. then it goes back and does the satin stitch. Okay, how oh, so. wonderful. And this is the finished one. We'll let it work and do its thing for a minute. You right. Can show so us. there's so this the is finished. What it'll look like. Right, here's the finished uh, uh, first step of the leaves. Okay. Now we're going to do that for all three colors of our fabrics. Uh, speaking of fabrics, uh, I'm going to back up a little bit here. Batiks work wonderful for this stained glass look. They have such d color depth and dimension. Right. They, and they look just like look glass. They know? really do. Yeah, the they look like look. stained glass. Plus, I like to work with them in this type of project because they have a tight weave and they're not going to ravel and it just stays right there. Yes, they work very well. Beautiful color choices. Yes. Okay. So once the entire uh, three in this case, three colors of our applique are completed. We're then ready to do the trimming. Let me back up too. Yes. Let me ask you, did mm -hmm. you have to, it have to uh, spray base or any way to, to keep this onto your background? Actually, just laying it on top. That's enough. That wow. is enough, and Pretty it just handy. stays right on. Okay. Um, the, uh, after we've completed all the applique, we can then unhoop it. Okay. And we actually come to the step where we want to trim. Uh, the applique, it looks completed on one side. And then we're going to trim. Um, and the reason we do this, let me find my spot here, is that we want to get rid of that yellow fabric so the light will show through. Exactly. I just wonder, why is she going to all that work? I just got it. Okay. Right. So then we only have one uh, layer of fabric behind yeah. the, the uh, pansies in this case. But you could really use any applique design that you want, um, or even a design that only had an outline stitch. You could treat it as applique and stitch it on your machine. Right, right, of course. That'd be beautiful. And then you stitch away, uh, cut away this outer stabilizer, too. Get rid of all the stabilizer. Okay. And when we're complete with it, we can then, you can hand me that, we can then cut out our actual uh, lamp, uh, whatever our base lamp shade uh, is. From the original template still. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. and trim that out and we're ready to attach it to the lamp. Okay. So very easy to do. You just start at one edge. And you may want to um, actually fold the two leading edges down. But this basically gets attached. Then we take our ribbon and just glue the ribbon directly onto the top and bottom edges of our lampshade. And I use a, a fabric, uh, a glue specially made for fabric. That's permanent. Yeah, right. that's Correct. good. Wow, that'll be beautiful when you turn it on. And here's the, here's the finished one, I see. Oh, yes. And this big one, you just sewed a little extra stained glass along it. I did. That one has a second layer of fabric to add a little more color dimension at oh, the top. Oh, I see. And you can make it as yeah. large as you want. 
Well, I also saw this beautiful one in the back. It looks different. Yes, that was the first one I did, and I didn't use an embroidery machine to make that one. So if you don't have an embroidery machine, you could still do this project. Absolutely. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And how did you actually make it then? I used a, a paperback fusible web, ironed it onto the back of my batik fabrics, mm -hmm. ironed them onto my base fabric, and merely used the applique stitch on my machine and stitched uh, by machine but without the embroidery unit around each flower. You could actually take this stained glass look and do it on anything. Absolutely. For your window treatments, mm -hmm. um, just about anything. Huh? Yes, you could. Thanks for your tips. I Thank love when you. you come visit us. Thank you, Cindy. Let's see what Janie's up to. Today we have with us Nancy Knaus, a very good friend of mine and a long arm expert. Welcome, Nancy. Well, hi, Janie. <laughs> what have you brought with you today? Well, I brought a different alternative to stained glass quilting. We're always looking for that fast and easy thing to do and I know with all the shows you do, that's what you're looking for too. Oh yes. Well, what I did was, instead of using your regular lead line, I chose one that had a satin stitch. So I would just sit down at my sewing machine and did this with the zigzag. This is a beautiful peacock. Good idea, because you could change the color of the eyes. Oh yes. I mean, they're just absolutely beautiful birds. Mm -hmm. Now the process that I did was that I just traced her pattern onto some fusible bonding. And then once I did that, then I went ahead and I ironed it to the back side of the fabric. I did the mistake, of course, of on my first trial, I put it on the right <laughs> side, which was a big mistake. So then I cut this all out, and of course, and then you just iron it to your fabric. And then I went back and then I traced it again and then I cut out the, the turquoise that you have here mm -hmm. and I fused that down and of course the other little small pieces and then I went back and then I just did my satin stitch on here. Well with that stabilizer on the back you can almost just sit in the evening on te while you're watching television and do the cutout. Oh yes, yeah. yes. I, that's exactly what I did. That's my resting time at night. And of course, too, you use a stabilizer on the back side, being that you're doing a satin stitch, otherwise you're gonna have real wrinkly little. Little wrinkles, yeah. Right. And then also included with the pattern, it had this, this design to where you would be able to frame it in. Little so, border. It's a beautiful, delicate little border. So that is where the machine quilting comes in with the mid-arm. So I chose, of course, using this metallic thread like this, it's a little bit harder to work with, so what I have found that I have to slow my machine down so that way, as we all know, that the heat from the needle is what will break your thread. Right, because it's made with something similar to Mylar balloon, and that'll warm up and stretch and, and break, so you have to keep it cool and go slow. Mm -hmm. So I'm one of these persons that likes to put on rock and roll music and just <laughs> whip through my quilts really fast, but this one I had to be very patient with. So. Um, what I do is, of course, we always start off by pulling our thread up from the bottom. And then, let's see, I've got that kind of slow. Let's see if this will be okay. And then, being that I'm going slow, it's a little bit harder to trace. So I will put a little bit of pressure to give it some more control. Using your hand a little bit like a hoop. Yes. And I find that gives my machine a little bit more control. I will go from here. I should fold all the way around the whole thing, but then I will just go from here. That is so beautiful, that little sparkle in there. And that once you get done with this, I mean, it really does shine and it, and it really brings in, brings your eye to the peacock. Now is somebody gonna get this for a gift? Or are you going to keep that for yourself? I think I'm going to keep this one for myself. <laughs> but I do have another one that I plan to give away. I think I might try that. It looks fast and easy and something I could do with even a, a child. You know, I've started my kids quilting, so I think that oh, would work. Oh, good. <laughs> I wish I had grandchildren. <laughs> Won't be long. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming and showing us this technique. Oh, you're very welcome, Janie. It was a pleasure. Our email question of the day comes from Elizabeth Shue from East Troy, Wisconsin. Hi, I'm left-handed and cut my quilt blocks and my angles are very difficult, especially last Friday. That's true. Lefties have rights too, Elizabeth. So no more fights on Friday nights. As you can see, this is a high-grade industrial mat. It's a two-sided mat. One side is for right-handed, which is side ones, and you can reverse the mat and simply make it for left-handed people. 
So no more fighting with your mats, and both sides have angles for right and left-handed people. So remember, Elizabeth, it's all about the tools. Quilt around the clock. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. We met Brian Burquest and his quilting fabric. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Our sewing educator, Cynthia Scott, is going to show us a very creative way to make a decorative lamp's shade that was... <laughs> Quilt Central is made possible in part by Jacquard Products, committed to meeting the needs of artists. Janome America, Janome, because you simply love to sew. Fairfield Processing Corporation, we care for your quilts. A1 Quilting Machines, A1, Precision Quilting Machines. Ulfa, the original rotary cutting system. Sulky of America, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, books, and iron-on transfer pins. Celebrating quilting in everyday living by offering you the new educational beginner kits. You may call toll free 1 866 Paducah or visit www.quiltcentraltv.com.